Now let's take a look at what in schema.org are called types. And let's continue with our previous example and start with the type person. Now the first thing to notice here is that person is a subtype of thing. Right? That angle bracket here indicates that person is a subcategory. So let's take a look at thing first before we look at person. The description of thing is the most generic type of item. Thing is the base category or the top level category depending on which direction you want to think about it in the most basic category in schema.org everything is a subtype of thing or a sub subtype or a sub 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 type and thing has properties in fact everything in schema.org has properties. Now the properties of thing are things like description and URL and name, etc. And then over here you get a description of the properties of thing. And this should all look quite familiar because this is exactly the same as Dublin Core and all of the other metadata schemas that we've looked at so far where an entity has a list of properties and you get descriptions of what those properties are. And something else that should look familiar to you is that each property has a expected data type. So for example, name, the expected data type is text because you want to be able to specify any string as the name for something where the expected data type of URL is, as you might expect, a URL. And thing has subcategories. More specific types under thing include other entities like action or event or organization or person, etc. So let's now go back and look at person. Now that we've looked at thing, the first thing you should notice about person is that person inherits properties from thing. And in fact, person inherits all of the properties from thing. Description, name, URL, etc., image, all of the properties of thing are inherited by its child entity person. But if I scroll up a bit, what we notice is that person has its own set of properties as well. And those properties are things like address and affiliation and birth date and children and whatnot. And all of these properties, of course, has, have their own expected data types. So some of these expected data types are fairly straightforward, things like text and date is the expected data type for birth date, as you would expect. Some of these expected data types are a little bit more interesting. The expected data type for children is another person entirely. So the expected data type for an attribute of person is another person. Or for affiliation, the expected data type is an organization or a specific type of organization, educational organization in this case. Now let's drill down into the hierarchy of types a little bit further and let's take a look at, for example, address, where the expected data type is postal address. Now the first thing you notice is that postal address is quite far down in the schema.org hierarchy. Thing has the child entity intangible element, which has a child structured value, which has a child element contact point, which finally has the child postal address. So postal address inherits properties from thing. Postal address inherits properties from contact point. If I scroll up a bit, 
you'll see that contact point has some properties that you would expect for a contact like email and fax number and telephone number. And then there are some unique properties for postal address, all of these, like for example, country and postal code and street address, etc. And the expected type of address country then is country, where the rest of these expected data types are text. So let's take a look at country. Country is also fairly far down in the hierarchy of schema.org types, and it inherits properties from thing. It inherits properties from place. And if you scroll down far enough, you will notice that country has no unique properties of its own. At the bottom of the list, there are, are no unique properties for country. All of the properties of country are inherited from thing and place. Now, not every property that country has inherited makes sense. For example, you have fax number and opening hours specification. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never been to a country that had its own fax number or had opening and closing hours. So not every property that country inherits actually makes sense for that entity. So this is where the dumb down principle that we talked about in the context of Dublin Core comes into play outside of the arena of Dublin Core. The dumb down principle is actually a universal principle for metadata. If a attribute, if a property doesn't make sense in a particular context, you just leave it out. If you're describing a country, you would just leave out the property fax number because there isn't one. Now let's scroll back up to the top, go back to thing, take a look at the more specific types. What we have here is a hierarchy with thing at the top and a list of more specific types or subcategories of thing. All of these more specific types are entities that are subcategories of thing. And each one of these has its own subcategories below that. So again, you get a family tree developing in the schema.org hierarchy. Schema.org is an exercise in ontology. What entities exist in the universe? What things are there in the universe of schema.org? Then, once you've identified what entities exist in the universe, you can figure out what characteristics those entities have to standardize how we describe those entities. For example, one of the characteristics of a person that we might want to share in common is date of birth. Date of birth is a common thing you might want to say about a person. Let's all agree that date of birth is a characteristic of person. Okay, we have the entity person and one of the properties we're going to agree is date of birth. Now that we've agreed that date of birth is a property of person, how do we talk about that property? Well, date of birth is a date. That seems obvious. So how do we talk about dates? The birth date property has the expected value date. And if we click on date, how we agree to talk about dates in the context of schema.org is that all dates should be specified in ISO 8601, which of course we have looked at before. So we've agreed on a common framework for how to talk about 
this one aspect of a person. A person has a date of birth, a date of birth is a date, and here's how to write or describe dates. I said in an earlier unit that metadata allows you to make statements about an object. The metadata schema you're using constrains the types of statements that you can make. In Dublin Core, you can make 15 types of statements. In schema.org, you can make many more, of course, but it's still a constrained set of statements that you can make. What kind of statements can you make using schema.org about, for example, a person? Well, you can say that a person has that following set of characteristics. Then the controlled vocabulary or encoding scheme that you're using constrains how you make those statements. What kind of a statement can you make using schema.org about a person? You can, among other things, say that person has a date of birth. How do you describe that person's date of birth? You describe that person's date of birth using ISO 8601. 